Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the Diana Wright Show Live, and we welcome you from around the world and in the United States, and we thank you so much for joining us today. What a beautiful day this is. What a beautiful day that you are alive and you are well. Because I want to start off by first, we honor the veterans yesterday. We celebrate them yesterday. But how many families who lost their loved ones you think celebrated yesterday? I think they didn't. Because to lose your loved one because of a dumb war that they went to fight, or to lose your loved one because of negligence of a hospital or negligence of anyone, is just something that no one on the planet, unless they've walked in your shoes, can truly understand what you go through. And yes, you might be happy and happy and look happy, but in your subconscious and in your soul, the pain is still real and fresh like it was yesterday or it was even today. So as we talk to families of veterans and we say, oh, we understand, you don't understand unless you have lost a loved one also. So let us be cautious about those words that we say to someone that you understand when they're grieving just give them some love and say, I wish you all the best and hope you feel better soon. Don't tell them you understand because you don't. It's just like men talking about, oh, we're having a baby. Is a man able to have a baby? Or is he just contribute to his sperm? And then most of the responsibility is left to the female, to the woman. To the girl. To the girl who should not have gotten pregnant in the first place. Because, you know, there are things like birth control. And there are things like if you say you are following the word, you should follow it the way it is. And yes, we know that God forgives us for our sins. But are we just going to continue to sin because we know we can go and pray for forgiveness? I don't think that's the way it's supposed to work. I don't think so. I truly cannot believe that God through his son Jesus expected that the fact that he gave us his son to die on the cross and suffer for our sins, we are just able to sin and do the same sin over and over and get away with it? What kind of life would that be? What is that? Should I then just get up and do anything I want to do, whether I think it's right or wrong? Because I know I can go to God in my little corner and in my little prayer closet with my shawl over my head and say, God, forgive me. God is indeed merciful. God is a God of fairness. God is a God who gives and loves us unconditionally. But should we continue to do what we know is not the right thing and then pray for forgiveness because we know we're going to be forgiven? It cannot be that way. And I'm here to tell you that it cannot be that way. And it should not be that way. And if you think it is that way, you are thinking incorrectly. So let me preach yes right now and tell you that if you know that what you... Everyone is allowed a mistake, but everyone is not allowed to do the same mistake over and over and over again. You shouldn't be. 
You should learn from the lessons. You should learn from your mistake. You should learn something before you continue to do what you do. Dr. Phil likes to ask, is what you're doing working for you? So as we ask, you know, I, I, I want to really find out what conservative means to the Tea Party and Republicans. I really want to know. Because if it is what it is, what they say it is, then a lot of them are not doing what they're saying they're supposed to be doing. And before I move from Veterans Day, I just want you to not say to those parents or those wives or those sisters or those children, you understand. You don't understand. Unless you are a fellow military parent, military wife, military husband, military child, and you truly understand. I really want people to speak their truth. Just like I say to you, if you go out and there's someone with a baby that's just born, do not say the baby's cute. If you know in your heart the baby's not cute, just say, oh, congratulations, and keep on moving. What's the baby's name? Something like that. Do not tell people that their baby is so gorgeous and pretty and whatever, and in your heart you know you are lying. Yeah? So we start there today. And as I said, you cannot continue to sin and then ask God for forgiveness. It cannot be working that way. What kind of world would we have if we worked it that way? This is the Diana Wright Show Live online. It's 10.33 as we start every morning at 10.30. And we take you through to 1130, Monday through Friday. And you can catch us if you miss the show. Even though I'm being told that people have the, the, the computers on in their office. And yeah, they're watching it not intently because they're working, obviously. And we don't want anyone losing their job. Because <laughs> people need to be working these days. We thank you for that. We thank you for all the supporters on Facebook. And as we try to bring you different, different, different guests every week and, you know, we just continue to do that. But I just welcome everyone on this planet today and I want you to listen carefully as I go into my next topic, which is this. The typhoon, which is similar to a hurricane in the U.S., that took place in the Philippines? I want each and every one of you today who are vertical to just stand up where you are right now and say, thank you, God. I love me and I'm alive. Because you see, we should be learning a lesson from all these disasters. Last year it was Sandy in Jersey and New York. Before that it was Katrina. Florida had its turn. Where will be the next? Tsunamis have taken place. Are we checking ourselves? And it doesn't matter how much money you have, how powerful you are, just consider the fact that you could have been stuck in the Philippines and you could be dead. Just think of that. So are you jumping up and thanking God and feeling blessed that you're alive today and loving yourself for who he made you to be? You should. Because you see, we all complain and we all look down on people who are not as, you know, educated as we are or wealthy as we are. And we can go out and buy mega mansions here and there and everywhere. But consider this, as I watched Tyler Perry on Sunday 
on Oprah's The New Chapter. And as he reminisced about being in that little hole under that house, and now he has the biggest studio, Tyler Perry studio, a mansion in Atlanta, a mansion in LA, a mansion in the Bahamas. He knew for sure it could only be God. And whatever you do, whatever you're requesting, whatever you are asking God for, sometimes when you're on the brink of giving up, and I can speak for that, I know. There are times you get frustrated and you're at the brink is when you look out and you see the line going along around the corner to enter into your theater to watch your play. Yeah. So let us not, let us rebuke the spirit of giving up today. And I'm giving that blessing to myself. So you don't give up. You wonder, oh, I'm doing this. Does anyone care? Does anyone want to know? Does anyone want to support? Does anyone want to love themselves on April 30th, 2014? Does anyone want to consider trying to love who they are? And you wonder, when is God going to put me out there in front of millions of you so I can talk to you directly about loving who you are and go through my spiel that I've practiced? Yes, in my mind. And the things I will bring and the gadgets I will let you look through and ask you the question, do you love who you are? Are you thankful to be alive today and you're not in the Philippines? Wherever else you are in the world. So that's the reason I'm asking each and every one of you to cue this and play it for your friends, your neighbors, your enemies even. Because it is important for us to take stock, take a breath, as Dax would say, breathe. You breathe, and when you breathe, you say, thank you, God, I love me. It is important to do. It might sound silly, but it isn't. Because you and I could have been on vacation in the Philippines at this time, at this moment, when the typhoon had, has ripped the Philippines apart. And we complain about the little things in our lives. The book that says, don't sweat the small stuff is crucial and important. Take time to spend time with. Like yesterday, I took time out to spend with my friend who I have not seen for years and years. I went to Los Angeles over the summer. She's right there. I did everything to find her. But I wasn't supposed to. Because God was going to let her find me on Facebook. Nikki Chisholm, my good friend, sweet, sweet person, met her yesterday. It was her birthday on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, her birthday was on Sunday and we were right on time to celebrate with her. And that's how God works in mysterious ways when we're just about to give up. So through Facebook, I found Nikki Chisholm, my girlfriend in Jamaica, who was my best friend in high school, Pat Garrell in Jamaica. And Faith Reed in Atlanta. Just when you're gonna give up. What else in your life today are you willing to give up? So we rebuke the spirit of giving up. And we encourage you to pursue who you are, love yourself, and keep thanking God for the small miracles because sometimes the miracles don't come in a big bang like Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. It comes in small portions and we have to exercise patience and I have to teach myself patience, patience, patience every day, God. Because why can't I get something easy? 
Why can't I be recognized for the work that I do or why the work that I've done? What is it? You ask yourself, not just me. I know all of you are asking the same questions. And why is it that I toil so much and I still can have some money, millions, like everybody else? Why do you have one man having so much and another man can't have any food in the street and sleep under the bridge or in their cars? Their children are starving. How does that work? How does that happen? I know you ask. But we must continue to believe, to trust, to have faith. Because if we, if we don't, then the Bible is not worthy. The whole Jesus story that we've been hearing all our lives doesn't really make sense. Who are you putting your trust in today? And then I want to share with you three different pastors that I listened to over the weekend. One said, you got to be formed, you got to be filled, and you got to function. That's D.D. Jakes. The next one, last night, I didn't even catch his name because it was so late and I was sleepy, but you know, I have to get the last word out. <laughs> but his message was powerful. He was on Kimberly Ray's program. At midnight. Yeah, I was up at midnight. I confess. I have to get the last word of scripture in my spirit before I go to sleep. I've stopped watching the news at 11 because I just watch the weather and move to the, the word. Because I want to fill my spirit before I fall asleep. And so, that preacher, who I've never seen preach before, what was his message? His message was big because he said that we should now believe that all the miracles that God performed through his son Jesus in the Bible, if you notice they were all done immediately, they were all done now, he wants us to open our faith, our spirit, our hearts and realize and want our miracles now. That's what he wants. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, that's how I've been praying. I've been saying, thank you God, if you've done all these miracles now, what is my little miracle to you? It's nothing. You can just do it supernaturally in a flesh. So this preacher wants us to not be stupid enough to think that the miracles in the Bible don't happen today. They do. Supernaturally. So he's asking us to believe that. To expect that. To want that. And to ask that of God. Oh yes. So are you willing to be brave enough like me? And say God everything that I have spoken as you promised in Mark 11 and you say have faith in God are you willing to go with me and expect your miracle now pray for it to happen now not three months from now next week tomorrow now because we're supposed to be living in the present we're supposed to be living in the now so why can't we get our miracles now God Why can't we get total restoration in my child right now as we speak? Why can't you have your miracle right now? Because tomorrow is not promised. And if you're in the Philippines right now, you know for sure that tomorrow is not promised. This is the Diana Wright Show Live. We thank you so much for joining us today. We take a break and come back to you in just a moment because it is Tuesday. Yes, back in just a moment.
Thank you for joining us. Hello everyone, this season of giving and I'm asking you to consider gets to be Deadly Negligence written by yours truly Diana Wright a story that will give you hope make you mad shock you sometimes but it's going to increase your faith and make you believe in miracles again so give Deadly Negligence as a gift as a gifting season begin up. I am depending to do this for me. Thank you so much and be the proud person to give a gift of the book Deadly Negligence on Amazon.com and on my website DianaWriteTV.webs.com viewers around the world and in the United States. Be blessed. Okay, we are back and this is the Diana Wright Show live right here on my website at www.dianawrighttv.webs.com. This is my television station. How do you know? Yes. And we invite you to join the conversation. Send us your questions on Facebook. Call us on our number 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. If you don't get any answer, just leave a message and your number, your phone call will be returned. Don't be shy about it, yeah? And make sure you're speaking clearly so we can actually understand what you're saying, yeah? Anyway, had a great time at Auntie Marl's Kitchen on Saturday. Chef Bunny and his wife was there and Marie was there and we had a few people come in and we thank them so much for joining us on Saturday. We need to be thankful and consider it a blessing if God sends us one person. That's one person you didn't have. So be grateful, be thankful. And of course, thanks to Miguel and Dee who are putting on this great concert this weekend and I will be there trying to sell you some more books. <laughs> My Redeemer Lives. It's a gospel concert taking place this Sunday. Now we don't have to give the date anymore. Just this Sunday, starting at 4 p.m. Yeah, I'm making sure of that now. Miguel, you better come on and straighten me out. <laughs> so this Sunday, and of course, they're going to have Anointed Voices led by Latell Gale. And the star of the show is going to be Marlon Brother Paul Anderson. That's Marlon Brother Paul Anderson. I hear he's a great worshiper and he really moves the crowd. So I will give my own assessment on Sunday. <laughs> All right. So we're asking you to join them. The doors open at, oh no, the doors open at 5 p.m. Showtime is at 6 p.m. So I need to make sure I read this thing right. So if you need further information, you can call Miguel or D. Dee. D's number is 561-351-3443. That's 561-351-3443. And Brother Miguel's number is 561-889-9584. That's 561-889-9584. Four. So it promises to be a great concert. There's also going to be the Overcomer Brothers and Norris Douglas and Sharon Fraser will be there also. So lots of things and there'll be refreshments on sale and you can have a grand time. I guess you don't need to cook your Sunday dinner on Sunday, but maybe you do because it's five o'clock. <laughs> so, all right, I thought it was four. I don't know where I got that from. No, maybe I'm supposed to be there by 4.30. <laughs> so, sorry for that confusion. But anyway, the, the doors open at 5 and showtime is at 6 o'clock. So, make sure you're on time because Dee and Miguel are promoters who begin on time. So, make sure you get there on time. And you can also, of course, pick up your tickets at the various outlets that they have. And one of the outlets... I. Yes, yeah, is Auntie Marl's Kitchen, right on Southern and 441. Just ask Bunny, does he have a ticket for My Redeemer Lives Gospel Concert this Sunday? Promises to be great. 
come and enjoy yourself and clap your hands and praise God. Because we all need to do that sometimes, don't you think? Anyway, hmm. In Virginia, strange things are happening in this country that are truly, truly, truly embarrassing. For me anyway, I'm embarrassed to know that in Virginia, Mr. Cuccinelli and his cohorts would be trying to do something so dishonest and disingenuous as to change the rules of counting absentee ballots for the races in Virginia because they're trying to get one guy not to win? Oh my word. Now, I can't even compare this to the Caribbean or to Africa or the rest of the world because I've never seen this before. This is shameful. This is embarrassing. Republicans are on a campaign to block you from voting something that our forefathers fought for us to be able to vote. It is our right to vote. So why? And these are the people who say they're conservative and they're Christians? Uh, oh my God, I don't think so. Please, please tell me, no, no! You cannot be a Christian. You cannot be so conservative. And then I hear that you have, you're getting some prostitutes. I hear you have two divorces. I hear you're doing this, you're doing that, and now you're trying to steal elections and you're supposed to be holier than thou? How does that work? Help me understand these things, because I really don't. I truly don't understand how people can say one thing and then do something else. I am here and willing to tell you all my weaknesses. Yeah, impatience, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get mad, yes. But after I get mad, I'm cool. Don't keep malice. I really don't keep malice. I don't. Because if I love someone or I like someone in my life and we have a dispute, I tell you how I feel, I ain't going to keep it. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> I ain't going to keep it in my heart. I'm going to tell you. And when I'm finished telling you, it's over. Yeah, I might be mad for a couple more days. But then it's gone. I still love you. You're still a good person. Unless you're really as evil as you displayed. So that's how we should be, I think. And we shouldn't be sinning and doing the same sin every time and then ask God for forgiveness. That is truly could not be the work of God wanting us to be that way. No. I refuse to believe that. So, form filled and function. Because T.D. Jakes believe that if you're formed and then you're filled, you have to function. He uses a toaster, saying that he would not want to have a broken toaster in his house because it's not functioning. What in your life and in your house you're saving and it's not functioning? What is it? You need to get rid of it. Dump it. Throw it out the door. Put it in a plastic bag, tie it up and in the garbage because it's no longer functioning and your life should function, the things around you should function, and don't tell me you're keeping that cracked plate because it's so precious. Throw away the plate. The plate is cracked, the crystal glass is cracked, throw it out. Don't save it, it's bad luck anyway. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that, it's bad luck. <laughs> don't keep chip things around and say, oh, you're gonna fix it. Oh, you're not gonna fix it. If the bulb is blown, take it out and put a new one in. And the next preacher, I told you three preachers. This is the third one, Joyce Meyer. She doesn't really call herself a preacher. She, uh, 
whatever. Joyce Meyer says, if you want your life to move, you gotta put the plug in. The way you plug your iPhone, your iPad, your other tablet, your everything that you have to plug, you know, she says she has something on her waist that tells her how many steps. So if you're gonna plug in all those things and charge them, don't you think you need to plug yourself in and charge you too? How do you plug in? You plug into the word of God. You plug into some positive people. You plug into some friends who wish you well and you should know that. Because you have some friends, you know, they're just there for the taking and what they can get out of you. And they're kind of, if you're doing much better than they are, they're kind of waiting for the moment for you to fall down. <laughs> Seriously, that is a fact. Those are not friends, really. Those are your enemies, wolves in sheep's clothing. Watch out for them because they're many. And don't go around in the world thinking everybody's nice because everybody's not nice. We want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And so it leads me to my question. When are Americans going to try and even try, just try to love each other? And love someone that doesn't look like you. So if you're black, you love a white guy or a white girl. Or a Hispanic person or someone from the Caribbean from Africa from Europe whatever just could you just do that favor for me try to embrace someone that is not like you not from your culture Try to not eat your own food all the time. Go up and explore other people's food and other people's culture. It's important. And it's not just important for you as an adult. It's important for you to teach your children to open up their minds to new things and new people, new culture, new foods, new music. Like I was in a store on Saturday evening, I think it was. Yeah. Quite crushing there late in the evening. And a lady said to me, Oh, you're moving to the music. You like salsa? I said, yes, my love. I like every music on the planet. Bring it to me and I'll appreciate. Because I truly believe, as I said to her, I truly believe in exploring other people's culture. Something that's different. Something that I am not, you know, versed with. And she was so happy to hear that from me. So then she started to talk to me, you know. Telling me how she likes this and how she likes that. And it's incredible. Start a conversation with someone. And my girlfriend Nikki said something to me yesterday that I thought was, as Oprah would call it, an aha moment. She said she would never want to live in a house again. She prefers to live in a condo or a townhouse because when you're in a house, it's just you. When you're in a townhouse or you're in a condominium, it's more likely that you're gonna meet someone you're going to see someone else. You're going to talk to someone else. And I thought to myself, that is absolutely true. Even though some townhouses, people still just drive in their garage and close the door behind them and never say hello to anyone. But a condominium, which is something I really would not want to be living in because I just, I suffer from claustrophobia. So I would not want to be, I, I just feel claustrophobic when I'm in an apartment unless it's an apartment looking over the ocean or something because the ocean provides that, you know, clarity and that, that openness for me. That's just me. I'm telling you, I'm being just truthful. But when she said that, I thought to myself, absolutely, you are correct. My love, you are correct. Because just think about it. When you're in a condominium, you're actually forced to say hello to someone else. 
Because we can live in these communities and we don't see we don't have to see our neighbors if we don't want to. But is that the right way to live? Absolutely not. And Nikki enlightened me yesterday. Thank you, Nikki. You always do anyway. <laughs> Full of life and spirit and always fun to be around. And those are the friends that you like you, you want to have. People who make you feel alive and you know and feel good about yourself. So, as we continue on our campaign to teach you and encourage you, I should say, to love who you are, love yourself. Because if you love yourself truly, there are things that you just won't do. You just won't do because you're thinking, I love myself too much to stoop to that kind of treatment. Or why should I do that? That's not going to lift me up. That's just going to tear me down. And as I say to young people all the time, you're not going to school for your parents. You're not being successful for your parents. You're not doing the right thing for your parents. You're doing all those things for yourself. Your parents have done their jobs by teaching you the right thing from the wrong thing. It's for you now to take it and run with it. So as I remind you, this is the Diana Wright Show Live and we thank you so much for joining us from around the world and in the United States. Welcome once again to the program. Okay, so we're going to move now to the dolphins. All right, the story is getting bigger by the moment. Haven't you noticed? Yes, it's getting bigger by the moment. Because right about now, I know that lots of you are wondering if you as an individual can change the world. Oh, yes, you can. Because Jonathan Martin is now on the road, on the journey to change a culture. I guarantee you it's going to change. My thing is to change the world to get everyone on this planet to love themselves. No matter who you are, how ugly you think you are, what you think you have or you don't have, because lots of rich people don't like themselves. I promise you that. So as we look to this whole dolphins bullying saga between Incognito and Jonathan Martin, and racial slurs and some people are saying oh if the nigger word wasn't used it wouldn't be a big thing oh yes it should be a big thing whether the nigger word was used or not so yes mr ross the stephen ross who is the owner of the dolphins team has now decided to do something totally unprecedented he's gonna get in his private jet today and he's going to be piloted to Jonathan Martin's house. I guess he's going to land somewhere close by. He's going to have a meeting. A meeting one on one with Jonathan Martin to get to the truth. Were the coaches encouraging on incognito to toughen him up? Is this a culture in the organizations of the NFL? And not only will the owner of the Dolphins, Mr. Ross, be flying to meet with Jonathan Martin in Los Angeles, so will the NFL investigators following Mr. Ross's departure. They want to know because this story has blown up so big and we are so ashamed. I always knew for quite a few years now that I'm sick of athletes and their crap because they make all this money they behave badly and they get away with it all the time and it really offended me and it started from I was in university and I used to see them coming to class in their slippers and their socks and they comb in their hair and they don't do anything they come they sit and they're dumb those they bring the book and they don't even open it and they get an A and you who busted your butt didn't but then as I got older and I saw the behavior of them in just about every sport 
if they're not killing each other on the court with a hockey stick or they're not doing this or they're not smoking whatever they're not supposed to be smoking and then they're going to talk about role models Charles Barkley I like so much because I heard him on television say parents you don't look to me for to be your children's role model I am not you parents should be your children's role model thank you Mr. Barkley for saying that and I always remember the fact that he said that because parents have this thing where they let their children, you know, idolize all these movie stars and all these sportscasters and all these athletes and everyone else. But you need to look in your house for your role model. It should be your mother, your father, and both. Because what you get from dad, you're not going to get from mom. And that's the reason I tell women, you cannot be fathers no matter how wonderful a mother you are. Don't feel crushed. It's not a problem. I'm a mother too. And I know I cannot be my husband. I cannot be my daughter's father. Because I'm just not. I'm not a man. I don't have a penis. I have a vagina. So women who are trying to keep their children away from their fathers. Like these men who marry these women from Argentina. This is the latest case. The other one was Brazil a couple years ago. Now he married an Argentinian woman who wanted her children to be raised in Argentina. Didn't she realize that before she married to someone in Colorado? So now, even though the judge in America and the judge in Argentina agreed that she abducted the kids, oh, she's coming up with her attorney with all kind of crap to say that the guy cannot get his kids back. So she holds the children hostage. And I'm told that it's thousands of these kind of cases going on. We just don't hear about them. So men and women, my caution to you. Be careful how you marry someone from another country. Because maybe, just maybe, when you get a divorce and you all start hating each other and beating up on each other, the children get caught in the middle and then even though one parent got custody of the children in this case, he decides to let the children spend time with her and boom, she took them away. And now he can't even get time to spend with his kids without being ambushed by her attorneys and family members. So American men who are so gullible and want to marry these gorgeous mixed breed girls just watch yourself <laughs> you never know how it's going to turn out because you see all of us we get married and hope and want not to get divorced but yes sometimes divorce is the thing to solve your problems especially if you're in a physically abusive relationship or any kind of abuse for that matter but people should talk about things like this. Discussion. Speaking the truth. If you're getting married to someone from Argentina and you live in Colorado, I would hope the conversation before you get married, if we have children, where would you want them raised? Just like if you're going to get married to anyone, how is your credit? Am I going to have to take on all of your liabilities? Those are the questions we need to ask. Do you have any money? Do we have to go struggle together? Or can you just buy a house? I don't think young people should be getting married unless they both have jobs and can be able to buy somewhere to live. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. But you need to at least be able to buy a house, a place of abode. And buy food and not be struggling. And you certainly should not be having children until you get yourself organized. So that that child comes into an organized situation as opposed to turmoil. And today you don't have any food to feed them so you have to go and live off the government and smooch as the Republicans like to say. So yes. One person. One. 
one, one person can make a change. So Jonathan Martin, even though people are saying, how come a big la guy like that talking about he's being bullied? You don't have to be big or small. You can be bullied at any juncture, no matter who you are. You can be bullied on the job as an adult, whether you're big, fat, skinny, or petite. You can still be bullied. So why is everybody questioning why this guy think he was bullied and he's such a big guy? Don't you look at Jonathan Martin's face? He just looked like a gentle soul. Just look at his face. The moment I saw him on television, I thought to myself, I don't watch football anymore. But when the story broke and I saw his face and I saw Incognito's face, I thought to myself, oh my God, Jonathan was not cut out for this kind of rough stuff. He wasn't. He just was not. Just look at his face. You could see the gentleness in his face. So thanks to Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, to do something unprecedented by going and meeting with Martin himself, individually. And then the NFL will follow with their investigative team. Thank you for that. Because you don't have to be little to be bullied. You can be a giant. Remember David and Goliath? <laughs> The giant can be bullying the little guy and the little guy can be bullying the big guy. So let's not put any labels on how bullying is done depending on your size because anyone can be bullied. Okay, I'm going to come back and talk to, about President Obama because you see, I truly believe that President Obama is a divine appointment because I'm just one of those people. Call me crazy faith. Call me crazy, believe and trust in God. Just call me that. But that's okay. Divine appointment. We're going to talk about that because everyone right now are throwing the nails in his coffin. And I'll give you the rest when I come back in just a moment. Because, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that so fast. Maybe we should just chill a little before we start burying President Barack Hussein Obama. We'll be back in just a moment. This is The Diana Wright Show, live. Hello, everyone. I am just asking you from around the world and in the United States to partner with The Diana Wright Show, sponsor The Diana Wright Show, or advertise on The Diana Wright Show. To do so, please call 561 228-19-2819. Please sir, partner with us and advertise with us to make the show a big hit just like you do by liking us on Facebook and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much. Don't forget the number to call 561-228 one nine two one that's five one two two eight one nine two one also we invite you to invite me to be at your event as a speaker and to tell you about my new books and so we encourage you to partner with us right here on the Diana Wright show advertise with us and sponsor the Diana Wright show five six one two two eight one nine two one Thank you so much. All righty, we are back, and this is the Diana Wright Show live, dianawrighttv.webs.com. Join the conversation with us right here on the program. We're live from 10.30 to 11.30, Monday through Friday, and we invite you to join the conversation. We also invite you to support the business of Auntie Merle's Kitchen with Chef Bunny. His food is really, really good. Not just me saying it now, quite a few people came and tasted and they are satisfied. So why don't you support the brother in his venture. Auntie Merle's Kitchen, it's right, conveniently located if you're in Palm Beach County. It's right at the corner of Southern Boulevard and 441 in the Burlington Coat Factory Plaza. 
Chef Bunny, and please tell him Diana Wright sent you <laughs> when you go. You might just get some special treatment. <laughs> Okay, also want to remind you that a concert that will promise to be make you jumping and clapping and praising on Sunday, this Sunday, at the Palm Beach Lakes High School Auditorium. That's on Shiloh Drive in West Palm Beach, and that's the exact address is 3505 Shiloh Drive. That's 3505 Shiloh Drive in West Palm Beach, and it's this Sunday, the gates open at 5 p.m. Concert begins, showtime is 6 o'clock. And it's My Redeemer Lives Gospel Concert, put on by Dee and Miguel. And you can check them out. They promise to start on time and finish on time. There will always be, also be refreshments on sale, so you can... If you didn't get a chance to cook your Sunday dinner, I'm sure you'll enjoy. I must ask them if they're going to be Sister Joyce's dumplings. Like She makes the best dumplings that I've never tasted. Okay, but everyone, even Anne-Marie is now raving about these dumplings. So, anyway, doors open at 5, showtime 6. So make sure you join them. And the star of the show is none other than Marlon Brother Paul Anderson. And also... Anointed Voices, led by Latell Gale and Sharon Chestnut Fraser, will also be there, and Overcomer Brothers, and Norris Douglas. So, make sure you join them, all right? This Sunday at 5, the gates will open. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, try to get them before Sunday. But if you didn't, and you wait for the last minute... You can get them at the door, all right? Refreshments will be there too, yeah. I think I won't cook on Sunday again. <laughs> anyway, so that's what you have to put on your calendar for this weekend. Promise me now you're going to make that a date on Sunday. That's November 17th, 5 p.m. The gates will open and 6 p.m. the showtime begins. Yeah? And come and enjoy yourself. Gospel concerts are always good. It's good. Sometimes people get saved at gospel concerts. Do you know that? <laughs> because they get in so much of a spirit when they're hearing the music and it gets to their soul and their spirit and they actually get saved at gospel concerts. I'm not lying. I speak the truth. <laughs> okay. Let's take a moment now and look at President Barack Hussein Obama. Because everyone is putting the nails in his coffin. They have dug the hole. The coffin has now been slowly put down. And they're piling on the dirt to cover. Not so fast, people. It's just the first year anniversary. And remember, Barack Hussein Obama, divine appointment. Don't count him out because the mighty one God is watching and seeing. And yes, he's having the debacle of the health care law rollout. But is that all his fault? No, it's not. He's taking the blame. But there are lots, there's a lot of blame to go around. And the first blame should start with the Republicans who have blocked the law, who have sabotage the law who have usurped the law in their states by not setting up the exchanges refusing to take the Medicaid expansion and they have done everything to tell nothing but lies about the actual law why because they know that you Americans don't read and if you don't read you can't know what's in the law so Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul, Paul Ryan, Speaker Boehner, and I can just go on and on and on and on. And Miss Buchanan, they will continue to tell you the lies if you don't open your own eyes and read for yourself. Does the law have some flaws? The president said they will fix them. 
is there any program in this or any other country of this magnitude that would have rolled out without a glitch? I don't think so. This one had too many glitches. So you must speak the truth. But did you expect it to have no glitches? Did you expect a million people to sign up the first week? I didn't. Maybe I'm just one of those people who are just realistic about life. People are basic human beings who leave everything for the last minute. So the last minute, when they realize that the deadline is coming and they really want some health care and young people, I promise you, you need health care. Been there, done that. And you need quality health care. You don't need health care that you're going to find out about when you are sick and in that bed in a coma, can't move, that you're only allowed to be in the hospital. You're only allowed to be sick and in a hospital for 45 days. Some of them, some of those policies are less. Make sure you don't find out about your insurance policy when you're half dead in a bed in a hospital who just tried to kill you basically because of negligence because the nurses don't want to work they want to sleep instead some of those ones that come on at night they are some genuine wonderful sweet hard-working caring nurses but my golly they have some bad ones in there that corrupt the whole thing and makes it stink yeah so let us not cover the coffin yet with that dirt because you see that coffin is going to be exhumed in a short time and i wish they would not have put a date on november 30th for this thing to be fixed they should just say when it gets fixed because god i truly believe that god is going to make the health care website and the whole shabakle and everything get worked out and I wonder what's gonna be said then oh well you're gonna hear that oh the president love give his people the sugar and they're like cocaine addicts they like free stuff and they're dependent and they're smoochers you're gonna hear that but when everyone realize just like they all love Medicare now and they all love Social Security the Affordable Care Act, I am predicting, will be love too. Watch and see. Remember I told you on this day that it is the 12th of November, the day after Veterans Day. And that's another thing. Everybody's talking about the veterans and the veterans. What have you done for veterans lately? Have you done anything? The Republicans who are supposed to be caring for and be, you know, these people who are into defense, they don't even want the, the, the poor veterans to get their benefits. But before I go, a final story, and I'm going to get to a lot more that I didn't get to today, but I'll get to them tomorrow or the next day, whenever. Because you need to know them. You need to know what's going on around you. So the Hillary Clinton for 2016 is in full swing. They're actually having a finance meeting today. And the governor, the ex-governor of Michigan, oh my, she is fired up and ready to go. <laughs> Chuck Schumer, fired up and ready to go. I hear they have thousands and thousands of people signed up on the website already and people are giving thousands and thousands of money dollars already wow secretary of state ex secretary of state hillary clinton hillary rodham clinton you're a very lucky lady but you know she hasn't announced yet Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts, her name is being thrown in the pot. 
she would be very good because she would let those boys on Wall Street have diarrhea. Oh yeah. Because she knows that she knows that she knows her stuff. So what if we have a Clinton Warren ticket? Ha! Let it be the first time you heard that on the Diana Wright Show. Right here. Clinton Warren ticket. Women ruling the world. The biggest place on the planet. I wonder how that would go over with the boys. Those Republican Tea Party yards who still believe that white old men can win elections for the Republican Party. They just can't. They don't have the numbers. So keep that in mind as you go about your day today and as I started the show with the fact that you should be loving yourself and thanking God that you're alive, you're vertical today. And thank God you're not in the Philippines. And please, I am also asking you to do me another favor. Pursue peace. And try to reconcile with someone who you have a rift with. Whether it's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your friend. Try to start the re reconciliation process today. Remember now. The preacher, one of the preachers I told you about, that was on Kimberly Ray's show last night at midnight. He wants you to ask for your miracle now. On that note, thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday at the Redeemer Lives Gospel Concert on Shiloh Drive in Palm Beach Lakes High School Auditorium. And D and Miguel promises to start showtime promptly at six. So we shall see. So if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never yours. Keep saying the magic words. I love me. And the dirt that you're going to shovel on top of the grave of President Barack Hussein Obama, hold it back. Because I promise you, he will be exhumed from that grave that you all are digging and putting him in right now. Be blessed and be safe. Tomorrow is another day. It is Wednesday. And hopefully Dax will join us tomorrow inside of Wellness Wednesday. Thanks again. Ciao.